Hey guys, so uh, I'd like to do a little tutorial on round tripping between flame and luster. For me, it took a long time to get comfortable with doing it regularly, and now I think I'm at a point where I can actually show somebody else what I've learned. Hopefully it'll help a little bit. Um, I've loaded in um, an XML, which has a cut in it, and you can see it's got five clips in it. First three are R3D, and the second two are Alexa. Uh, being that the Alexa was recorded ProRes Log C, I've gone ahead and uh, cached these clips. I'm not going to cache the R3D because we want to be able to change the metadata in Luster. I have gone ahead and consolidated down to 12 frame handles so we don't go into Luster with a bunch of extra frames. So anyway, uh, here it goes. This is the sequence. I'm now going to go into Luster, and we're going to go ahead and load that clip in, that sequence. Just by going to Editing Browse, we want to make sure that source grading is on so that any of the effects that we put on the clips, any of the soft effects that are created, round trip back into flame. I've already created a bookmark for where this file exists. This is the sequence that I want to work on. Uh, I can either drag it into the library, or I could drag it right into the timeline. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can see it's going to take a few seconds to actually load in because it's R3D material that's coming across from a Mac Mini, so the footage is not local. The footage for the Arri Alexa, though, is local store, so that's already here cached on these stones. The next thing we want to do is, since we have our clip in here, our sequence, we now want to create a grade for that sequence. So we're going to go into Setup, Grade, New Version. That now creates a grade for our sequence file. We're going to hit Save again, and being that History is on, and Autosave, we've now also generated an Autosave file that saves based on whatever you have stored in Settings. So here's our clip. This is our R3D material. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have it loaded the way we want, whether it's full res or, or full premium or whatever it is. Uh, let's go ahead and make those adjustments now. In image transcode, we want to go to format and adjust our debayering. We're going to adjust the high to half premium turn on drag and enhance black and turn this to maximum for noise reduction. These are just settings that I'm used to working with and you can do whatever you need to make this work best for you. In color I'm going to change it to red lock film because I have better success grading red lock film than I do working with red gamma 4. Also we're going to press the tab button which will turn on our sequence proxies so we can see that under our grade. Okay, we've now changed settings for this first clip. We want to copy that over to the other two. So we're going to go back to Setup, Selector, Transcode Settings, and select R3D. Now I don't want to copy all the settings across because that would change perhaps color temperature or ISO or any one of a number of things. I only want to copy across a few of these parameters. So if I select R3D, you can see it selects everything, and that's not what I want. So I'm going to unselect it again, and then just select the parameters that I do want to change in order to give me the way I want that clip set up. So now I've selected the parameters, and I want to then select the clips that I want to copy it to. I know that the second and third clip are also R3D, so I'm going to go ahead and copy those parameters to that one. And you can see that the white dot came on, which means that this clip has changed. So if we now go in and select each clip individually, you can see that they all have the same format and same color settings. If we go to Image Transcode Format, we can see that they're all now half premium, high detail, maximum noise reduction, and drag and enhance black, and they are also all red log film.
Being that we have made that adjustment, we want to save that over the sequence that we've loaded in. So those parameters will come back when we recall that sequence. Okay? So now we have a grade. We have the sequence adjusted for, for the correct settings that we want for the R3D. And of course the Alexa has baked in log C, so that's not anything we want to change at this point. Let's deselect these two clips and then hit Alt F9. What Alt F9 does is it expands out the head and tails, the handles of each one of these clips, so we can go ahead in and make proxies of these to work from, just to make it a little bit easier. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into Setup, Settings, and change the settings in this project so that Local and Proxy are enabled. We'll save that, and now we can go ahead and generate proxies for this. I'm going to go to Render, Local, and you can see Proxy Options. We want to generate proxies. So I'll go ahead and do that. What that's now doing is it's generating half-resolution proxies for all five clips. It enables you to work faster because you can work on the half-res as opposed to the full-res which can often be a problem, especially when you're dealing with R3D material, which could be 6K or 8K. Not something you really want to be trying to play down in real time. So this is going ahead and generating proxies for all five of the clips. You can see the proxy generation for the R3D is a little bit slow because this is actually coming from a Mac Mini through 10 Giga E into Flame. The ARRI log C is already locally stored, so that proxy generation will be quite a bit faster. All right, we now want to go in and save the grade because saving is just something in Lustre you do all the time. We can also now switch the full res to half res, and we see that each one of the clips has a proxy generated so that we can work in real time on these clips. All right. Now let's go ahead and uh, just rough in a grade perhaps on the first shot. Just to get us an idea of how to start copying grades and moving grades around. So there's the first shot. We now want to copy that grade to let's say all four clips that follow. We'll go ahead and right click each one of those clips and use a selector to copy that grade. We'll go back up to the top. I often will select all and then deselect just to make sure that nothing is selected. And we're going to copy the overall grade to those other four shots. Select grade and select copy. Again you see that the grade dot comes on, meaning that grade has changed. If we play this down or scroll through it, you can see this now has the same grade that we put on the first shot. We're going to save that grade and we're going to render this out so that we have the clips back in flame. If you remember, we had pressed Alt F9 to expose the handles for when we're generating proxies. We now want to go back to Alt F8 and what that does is it puts the timeline back into regular order with the handles not exposed. This means that when we take it back into flame, everything is back to where it should be. Okay, we're going to hit Save, Render, Local. We want to render full res, and we want to render the entire timeline. Source grade is on, head and tails will be on, and we hit Start. We can then press P, which takes us to the print output. This is now the render that we've just done. I just hit save again just to make sure that I'm saving my last settings. And I'm going to toggle back to flame to take a look at the render that I just worked on. What we see here is the original source material. 
that we used for the sequence in Lustre. Let's now go into the Lustre directory and grab our timeline that we just graded and we'll drag that up into our sequence reel. Right click it to open and you can see these are now graded files from Lustre. Same handles, same resize that was applied in reunit into this timeline. You can also see that this was rendered out at 3K and same thing for the Arial Alexa. I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on round tripping between Flame and Luster and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.